late you know portugal it's, um, it's a beautiful country but um it's no it's not like germany not everything runs on time you know okay <laughs> so we woke Little up southern european yeah, attitude yeah, yeah. definitely yeah. definitely and we woke up really early so we didn't get um, any sleep to be to be he here we flew to brussels and the flights were late mm -hmm. so we were like yeah like Will we, we make it, uh, will we have time to go on stage, will we sound everything like shit, will, mm. it, will it be chaos. But when we mm, went on stage, it was like a magical moment. People were, you know, it was quite crowded mm -hmm. um, already for 2.30, which is such an obscene early hour mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, for a band okay. that yeah. the night is our element, you know, it's the element of our music, we call it Moonspell. So That's what I said too. It's, um, it's a bit weird sometimes, but I think the feeling and um, the, the warm welcoming of the people just made it up, mm -hmm. you know, for, um, for anything that was lacking in atmosphere and it sounded great from the stage, it looked great, mm -hmm. a great stage with, the, with all this, you know, decoration mm -hmm. and everything. So um, I think we had a, a blast definitely and um, it was good because um, we were afraid of coming here with no sleeping, no playing. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it happens to festivals, you talk with other bands and no. it's chaotic. You know, everybody's on vacations with all their families and I'm going on vacation with my families, mm -hmm. my family as well. But, um, you know, sometimes it's just in our way, we just want to go and play the festivals and work. So I, I was glad to see that many people and people really into into Moonspell. Um, of course, we would like to play it for long because we love to play mm -hmm. live for 90 minutes, 100 minutes. Mm -hmm. And I think um, it was, um, you know, great. It was just a warm up gig for mm -hmm. the other bands. Yeah. We really had fans. We just made the signing session and they had to kick us out because there were so many people still there. Okay. So I'm very mm -hmm. happy with the Alcatraz, mm -hmm. definitely. Good. Uh, you also have a, a new album out, uh, Extinct. Yeah. Uh, can I say that, that your music has become a little more accessible compared to the earlier years? Well, maybe. I mean, what we see in metal is that um, bands are going also more extreme, you know, mm -hmm. uh, people are listening to more extreme music mm -hmm. and there's many bands that were very extreme that are enjoying um, a lot of success, while well, Moonspell has always been about the songs and mm -hmm. I think that with Extinct we really focused on making songs that sounded good, you know, with um, no shame, with no uh, pun intended, we just wanted to make songs that were catchy mm -hmm. and that, uh, you know, were emotional um, in a way. And uh, we were also not afraid, but uh, curious to see if people would, you know, just um, bash us off trying to make a commercial album or whatever. But the songs are quite beautiful and they're quite redemptive mm -hmm. in a way. So it doesn't really apply that we are trying to go, you know, to play on the radio or, you mm -hmm. know, on the pop radio. It's something that, um, you know, there's many bands um, that um, do a kind of pop metal, mm. you know, like with Dimentation or I Wish or Delane. Mm. But with Moonspell it's still dark, yeah. in a way. Mm -hmm. And it's dark on the way of the old Gothic metal mm -hmm. bands. Um, a scene we know very well, especially since we did the Irreligious uh, back in 96. So I think, all in all, the album is a little bit more rock and roll mm -hmm. than, um, yeah. than the previous albums that were mm -hmm. more metallic um, oriented. This one has a little bit more of a flirt still with metal but more with rock mm -hmm. and gothic um, music so I mean we, you never know what the crowd will uh, say or expect mm -hmm. but I think it, um, people actually enjoyed this uh, move and people actually yeah. were keen in having a more melodic moon spell mm -hmm. than us just doing you know another Alpha Noir mm -hmm. or another Night Eternal which are albums we love and they you know tell their they have the spirit of their time but with us, music is always a, an open book. You know, mm -hmm. we never know what we're going to sound next album. We don't plan it like this. No. You know, I don't know if metal is like this. Sometimes I listen to bands, and it seems like everything is very programmed mm -hmm. in a way. With everything, with us, it's very chaotic you know, because it comes from the heart. Mm -hmm. So you and you never know where your heart is. You know, no. Extinct was not an album that we needed to do for any other reason than to tell a story, to tell what was happening with us, mm -hmm. like. Um, you know the old school of way of making music you have a problem we have a, you have a situation mm -hmm. you go in the studio and you, you deal with it by making music it's not to go on tour or whatever because we still have a lot of stuff to do mm -hmm. with Alpha Noir but we put everything on hold because our creative time 
the bell was ringing and I think that's what separates bands from businessmen mm -hmm. you know sometimes the labels say okay in 2017 you have to make another album and we say well let's see if we are inspired to do so we will do so but if not we can even do earlier or we can even not do it at all mm -hmm. you know that's the way we are our position into music has always been like this mm -hmm. yeah. there's one song that pops out on the album and that, that is La Baphomet it's not <laughs> only Sung in French, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, but it has also a bit of cabaret feel mm -hmm. uh, about it. Well, where does where does it come from? Well, it was a, a crazy idea that started off with our bass player mm -hmm. Iris. That um, he had a, this weird dream that um, he was dying and he has this Mozart moment. So he wrote his own requiem. So he wrote a little bit of the La Baphomet mm -hmm. to start with. And when I listened to it, I imagined it, yeah, as a funeral parade. Then we've been into New Orleans a couple of times um, with a band, and I imagined using the French, because the Cajun culture and the Volu culture yes. use French, as well as their language, and it got very mystical. But um, it was just um, an, ex an experiment, you know. Mm -hmm. It's a very different song, but I think it's the perfect song to end the album, because um, the album is so emotional that the cabaret moment, you mm -hmm. know, it comes uh, up as a little bit of um, a twist of the knife, mm -hmm. <laughs> in sure. a way. So um, I had the idea of singing in French. I speak, I read perfectly French, but I mean, I don't practice enough French mm -hmm. to, to speak. It's a language I really like because I love the poets, Baudelaire, Verlaine, okay. Rimbaud, you know. Mm -hmm. And um, I always read them in French and I, I wanted to do something like an exotic dancer called mm -hmm. La Baphomet. And people will, we didn't know how people reacted because nowadays it's more um, meat and potatoes, you know, mm -hmm. it's not like people are doing avant-garde stuff or not most of the bands. And um, it just came out as a perfect ending to the album. Mm -hmm. And we played this song a couple of times live in Paris once. For instance, and people were crazy about it, mm -hmm. you know, because okay. it was, you know, mm -hmm. on their own language. Yeah. yeah. You mentioned uh, Rambo and Baudelaire. Uh, yeah. Is that is that where the dark romantic music from Moonspell comes from? From literature or as well? Yeah, yes. we have a deep connection with literature. I still think that uh, books are the best way to spend the time. They are still the best escape from reality. I'm not the guy that goes on tour and is playing PlayStation or role playing. Mm -hmm. I mean, nothing against people who do that, of course. But I still carry a lot of books around. Mm -hmm. uh, on paper, <laughs> I yeah. have some iBooks. <laughs> when I go to travel far, I don't want to take all the weight. Mm. But I love books, I'm always um, reading, and I still think it's the, for me, besides music, it's the most supreme form of art because you create your own world, mm -hmm. you create your characters, you create your plot. So we have a deep connection with literature, and mm. especially when it comes to the lyrics, we are heavily influenced, not only, but um, a lot by the, the French romantic, mm -hmm. dark, uh, you know, school of, uh, of poets, and I really love it because for me, it has everything to do with the gothic, mm -hmm. and the romantic, and um, and the dark. And um, obviously, um, I think that um, in uh, in metal and in gothic music, books and literature have always been very, very important mm -hmm. to the fans. Not only you know Tolkien or the Second World War or the pirate books. There's much more than 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 than. Though that kind of uh, literature, we Moonspell, we really like the, the classic books, the literature, mm -hmm. not only the French, but also especially the European. Mm -hmm. We have made many songs that came to our minds because um, of book reading, yeah. Okay, what book are, are you reading now? I'm reading two books. <laughs> One is called Jockey, like mm -hmm. a guy that rides yeah. a horse. It's from a Portuguese-Brazilian um, um, girl. Mm -hmm. She's a, it's a poetry book. Mm -hmm. It's very it's modern poetry, more mm -hmm. urban, but it's very good. And I'm reading um, a really heartbreaking um, um, a book that's called The End of the Soviet Man, mm -hmm. which is about the desegregation of um, you know the Soviet Union yeah. and how people feel about it. It's a more of a non-fiction book of, uh, with interviews mm -hmm. and they tell stories that I haven't known and uh, yeah. you know and uh, freedom always comes with a with a big price mm -hmm. and it's a very heartbreaking um, um, kind of um, um, account mm -hmm. and before that I was reading a great book called by a guy with, with a very weird name called Axor Lannes because mm -hmm. he's from Iceland okay. and he wrote this great book about um, Iceland and the myths and the mm -hmm. sagas called the um, Icelandic Bell 
Mm-hmm. So I'm always reading. I have already, you know, I have the same obsession about books that uh, women, some some women have about shoes. So I have okay. a, always always buying books. I have already a waiting yeah, list. So you go to bed yeah. early at night? Yeah. No, I have a kid who <laughs> doesn't like to sleep that much. But um, I read a lot on my on the plane, mm-hmm. on tour. Okay. And um, every time when I'm having breakfast, that's my time of the, the morning before you know going out with my kid or going to practice okay. with the band or going to work. And I always read a lot. And also in Portugal, I, um, I already wrote um, three, Portu- three poetry books. Mm-hmm. And um, now I have an anthology out in Portugal and in Brazil that is going very well. So we're going to Brazil and I'm going to uh, also not only to play with Moonspell at uh, Rock in Rio and some other places, but to present the book um, as well. And I work with uh, with a label and I have uh, big plans because, you know, let's, f- let's face it, it's like uh, obviously you, you come here and you see bands that have 30, 40, 50 years of career, mm-hmm. you know, but um, when you come in the 90s, it's not like you are a band from the 70s or the 80s, so I think your longevity will be a little bit mm-hmm. shorter. So I see also my work with books as an investment for the future and I'm mm-hmm. too old to rock. I can definitely, you know, just have some background work yeah, and, and okay. work in books because I already did some translations into Portuguese as well. I am mm-hmm. Legend from Richard Mason, H.P. Lovecraft, some of my favorite writers. So mm-hmm. I'm really a bookworm, as they say. Yeah, there's <laughs> a lot of them. I, I, I was interviewing uh, Bruce Dickinson last week and he... he he's I have his book, <laughs> <laughs> Chemical Wedding. <laughs> yeah. uh, he's also a very yeah, he's, he's big reader. It's amazing. Besides yeah. all the things he does. Yeah, because he's he, like a yeah. renaissance man. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> definitely. Of course, I'm a lot of... Uh, well, Lovecraft and things like that. Yeah. Um, you mentioned Russia earlier, and I, uh, this week I, I read about your aunt who started the Communist Party in Portugal. Oh, she didn't start it, but oh, okay. uh, she was. Um, she, she was, was a member. A, she was a member, yes, because we had a fascist dictatorship mm-hmm. from uh, 24 to 74. Mm-hmm. I was born in 74, already a child, ch- ch- the child of the revolution. Mm-hmm. Let's call it this way. And um, the Communist Party in Portugal was definitely a very important force, not, you know, as a a resilience, resistance force. Mm -hmm. So she was involved in it, you know, Mm -hmm. to this this despair of my grandma, because (laughs) she was always in trouble, Mm -hmm. you know, and um, she was very involved in politics. Nowadays, politics are very different. Mm -hmm. Uh, Unfortunately, you know, people just want to mind their own careers and make Mm -hmm. money. It's no different uh, from uh, Brussels or Lisbon or Paris or Mm -hmm. England. You know, uh, politics are not the mediator with the Mm -hmm. people and just taking stuff. From us, so she has given up a little bit on the mm. on the political mm. uh, um, side, but it's still the Communist Party in Portugal, and they, they still um, uh, between all the, the the parties that there are there, they're still one of the few that work and that have a, a program that mm-hmm. thinks about um, you know the welfare so of people. So you lean towards that as well. I mean, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Okay. I think it's. Um, I mean, when uh, we were watching the, um, you know the. TV together. Mm-hmm. We were not watching just the American movies. We were watching also the parade with Brett and Ev. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, that's a part of my um, growing up. But I would say I'm, I'm definitely more left wing than mm-hmm. uh, than right wing or center because I don't believe that uh, at least not in Europe the liberal thing is not working as well. You see the case with Greece. You see the case with Portugal. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, there's a lot of um, you know this. Um, Oleg Allen mentality, mm. like people against people, the Portuguese ate the Greek because they haven't paid, and it's not really like this, you know, the story is not very well told, the story, mm. it's simple, you know, the powerful and the rich, um, you know, made a pact to be richer, and everybody's suffering, you know, and mm. our countries are being sold, and believe me, we had um, the Troika there, the, F, um, the International Money, Monetary Fund, we played, we paid lots of money, mm-hmm. and um, don't believe the news that say that Portugal is better, mm-hmm. uh, or Portugal is better, no, Portugal has um, high uh, unemployment rates, um, half a million people have um, immigrated from Portugal, mm-hmm. and there's uh, more than 200,000 people without jobs, so I think this uh, recipe is not definitely not working. You know? yeah. okay. Um, I don't already ask that. <laughs> it's like you read my mind with my questions. <laughs> <laughs> mind reading. Well, uh, um, a question about Portugal. I, I visited uh, Portugal quite a few times now. Uh, but what strikes me the most 
is the great amount of fish you guys eat. Yeah. Yeah, is that is that typical? Very typical. Yeah. I mean, when we grow up, we don't like to eat fish. We mm -hmm. want to, you know, the bad stuff, the, mm -hmm. the American stuff, the junk food and the meat and whatever. But uh, when you grow up, you grow up to appreciate it. Portugal mm -hmm. has 900 kilometers of coast. Mm -hmm. We have um, a lot of tradition on uh, fishing. Mm -hmm. You know, people can fish with bread mm -hmm. in Portugal. Unfortunately, something that our government doesn't exploit because it could be our industry. We make excellent, um, you know, canned tuna and mm -hmm. sardines and everything. Okay. That's we really know how to cut fish. So uh, yeah, it's a kind of a national obsession. Not only f fish, but also seafood. Because there's so much and so much I mean, variety. There's a lot of ways to prepare things. Uh, I, I yeah, I've I've, lot, I've yeah. eaten yeah. for <laughs> cod cod yeah. for two weeks and it was always prepared in yeah, a different way. Yeah, they they used to say that codfish, which is a fish that doesn't exist in Portuguese waters, because mm -hmm. it's um, okay. It's um, it comes from Norway. We are the number one importers of codfish. So, but we don't um, eat it fresh. We eat it salt, uh, dried and salt, and. Um, our grandmas used to say, and they are right, that there is uh, 365 days in the year and you can cook the cod okay. 365 <laughs> different ways. Yeah. I'm not the biggest chef, I cook, my wife w hates to cook, mm. so we gotta eat, so we cannot <laughs> okay. be at the restaurant at the same time, and even if I'm not the, you know, the biggest or the most, um, the best chef around, I can cook uh, codfish at least 10 ways, 10 different okay. ways. Yeah. How do you call it in Portuguese? Bacalhau. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Now I remember. <laughs> like in Spanish, bacalhau, bacalhau. Yeah. Well, here it's cabalhau. So yeah, cabalhau. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, the final question: uh, If you would uh, strand on a deserted island and you can pick anyone to come with you, which tr uh, three artists or other persons, living or dead? Would you take with you? Well, besides the family, of course, I'll take my son and my, my <laughs> besides wife. Besides the family, and my wife, she's a singer as well, so she's an artist. Oh, okay. Yeah, she was sings in a pop band. Mm. I don't know. Some of them are dead, really, because my some of my favorite artists are dead now. It's the extinct has a lot to do with that as mm -hmm. well. Uh, it was Peter Steele from Type of Negative, yes. Quarthen from Bathory, mm -hmm. and Ronnie James Dio. I mm -hmm. really, I could take them to the desert island, even though. Um, probably won't do um, anything um, right now to take their legacy and their their mm. memories because um, sometimes when I look around to living people there's still a lot of people that I look up but they are not mostly in rock or mm. or metal music um, for instance I love Nick Cave I think mm -hmm. he's one of the best artists ever. Leonard Cohen, mm -hmm. um, as well, and Peter Murphy mm -hmm. from um, X Bar House, and um, okay, yes. now um, mm -hmm. Solo is one of my favorite singers. So probably I'll take these um, three guys, and for sure we'll get plenty of booze <laughs> and, <laughs> okay. and drinking together. Yeah, yeah. I'm playing cards and uh, <laughs> ri writing poetry, you know, and being okay, yes, being yes, men yes. and boring. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> God.